Um, I realized uh, this morning that where, where it says continued on next page, there was actually a next page that had like three or four problems, but I mean, it is what it is. So let's see how long it takes to go over this, and if you guys don't have questions tomorrow, maybe we'll do those tomorrow as some extra practice. Okay, so we'll just see how it goes. All right, so I would like to do number eight, because a lot of people have said to me, I have an answer that's really close, but not quite the right answer. Um, and my guess is that you made a mistake. Because I'm pretty sure my answer is right. But I could be wrong, because I have been known to make mistakes with alarming frequency. Um, secondly, uh, I would like to do, I think number 10 probably is worth yeah. worth yeah. spending some time on. That was so, so, so fun. fun. You said slide six times. I know, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, so before we do that, um, Did we do okay with, I guess two and three, the answers weren't on there, so they were drafts, right? So I guess we need to go over two and three also. Yes? Yeah. All right. So, so uh, any problems with number one then, I guess, before we jump to two and three? Uh, I don't, let's see, let's see. Uh, they were posted on the thing. I don't have them written down right here. Let's see, boxes on a ramp. Uh, as the angle of the ramp is increased, uh, but before the box slips. So let's see, A, as the angle increased, the component of gravitational force on the box along the ramp will increase. So A, a is increased. Uh, B is increase, right? Because as you have more force pulling it down, you need more force to prevent it from sliding. Uh, C is decrease, right? Because as the ramp gets steeper, your perpendicular component gets less, your normal force gets less. Um, D is the same as C, right? So that gets less. And E, uh, the maximum friction is going to decrease because your normal force decreases. Good? Yeah. All right, let's talk about two and three. I remember this being an issue last year with my students. This one was tricky because you had to make a graph, but there's no numbers. OK, so um, number two. It says, in the figure at the right, a block of mass M is held stationary on a ramp by the frictional force on it from the ramp. A force F is directed up the ramp, is then applied to the block, and gradually increased in magnitude from zero. So, so the idea is, initially, Sorry, yeah, this is uh, 4.7 number two, for those of you keeping score. Um, let's see. Uh, so initially, it's held at rest from the frictional force. So what's pulling it down the ramp is our FG parallel. It doesn't slide the ramp because of some force of static friction. Okay? And then what happens is you push uphill on it with some force F. Okay? Um, and it, that F starts at a magnitude of zero. During the increase, what happens to the direction and magnitude of the frictional force on the block? Make a graph of the force of static friction as a function of F. So here's my graph. What goes on the horizontal axis? F, the applied force, right? Yes. And the question wants to know, how big is the force of static friction in that circumstance? Okay? So there are not a ton of numbers here, so we're going to have to kind of label using some, some letters, I guess. All right? So the initial state has no force, right? No applied force. So sorry, I just sprayed. So if the applied force is zero, what has to be true about my frictional force? So yeah, let's do, let's make up the hill be positive and down the hill be negative. All right, so I see a lot of people not following along here. I'll pop you guys. So look, if there's no applied force, what has to be true about this static frictional force? It's got to equal FG parallel, right? So that tells me my y-intercept, FG parallel, right? 
Make sense? Yeah. Now, if I push up the ramp, it's still not necessarily going to slide though, right? So what happens to my static friction force? It decreases, right? Does that make sense? Because I'm pushing it up. So right now, static friction is preventing it from sliding downhill, right? If I push uphill, what I'm doing is I'm helping friction a little bit. And so the force static friction needs decreases, right? At what point will the force of static friction be zero? Good. So when, oh, well, ooh, yeah. the, the force of static friction is changing. Oh, when, uh, the force, when your force is equal to the force of gravity. There you go. Good. So suppose that your force equals Fg parallel. Well, that means static friction doesn't have to do anything to prevent the motion, right? So when F is Fg parallel, then my static friction force is zero. Does that make sense? Any questions? All right. So, would this be easier if I put numbers in here? No. No? no. Okay. So, everybody's okay? Yes. All right. So, now I'm going to keep increasing my force. So once my force is bigger than Fg parallel, now I'm sort of attempting to make it move up the ramp. Well, that's for static, right? So what's, so what's, well, not necessarily, though. So let's suppose, hypothetically, let's suppose that my force up the hill is 10 newtons. All right? And let's suppose that Fg parallel down the hill is, I don't know, 6 newtons. Just in the other direction. What happens? Sure, we got Peter. Uh, force of? Is it static or kinetic? Static. It's static. So remember, you guys, static friction will always do everything in its power to prevent the object from moving. Okay. So let's suppose that static friction can exert up to, again, I think it's easier if we pick numbers. Let's suppose that our force of static friction max is, I don't know, 8 newtons, arbitrarily. Okay, and let's suppose that this Fg parallel is maybe three newtons. Okay, so if this force here is four, remember static friction doesn't want it to slide up the hill. So what's static friction going to do? Push down the hill with one newton, right? Do you guys see what I'm saying or no? Okay, um, and so. That will keep happening until until you get to FFS max, and then the graph falls apart, right? Because after that, then you switch to kinetic. Oh, I guess I should put a negative sign here. Make sense or no? Yeah. Okay. What's up? Is there a bag of cookies on the board? I wonder if the same. On the whiteboard. Oh, on the board. Oh, it's Dan Duran's uh, spooky snacks. He wasn't going to get them. Okay, everybody good? All right, everybody's happy with two. All right, number three is similar. Number three, reconsider the last question, but with the force F now directed down the ramp. As the magnitude of F is increased from zero, what happens to the direction and magnitude of the frictional force on the block? So once again, here's F. Here's our force of friction static. Here's Fg parallel. Here's my force of friction static. So if F is zero, then uh, why am I dumb? If there's no force, then everything is good, right? So this is just like what we had before, right? Yeah. All right. So if I push down the hill, 
then my force of static friction will get bigger until it hits the max, right? And then it slides. So this one is way less interesting. Make sense? Yeah, because the, gra the, the problems specifically talk about static friction, right? Yeah. Cool? Yeah. And once you exceed the, the max, then it's not static anymore, so the graph sort of doesn't make sense. Everybody good? Yeah. All right, any problems with two or three? OK. Um, what if we did kinetic friction? What would the graph for kinetic friction look like? Show me with your hands. Ah, uh, very good, Johnny Walton. Tell me why. Why, why, Johnny? Yeah, your static friction force is constant, right? Or kinetic friction force is constant, right? Cool? So that's why there wasn't a question about that. All right. I'm going to jump ahead to number eight. Cool? Or I guess I should do this. Before I do eight, are there questions on three through seven? Or four through seven, rather? No problems with four through seven. Going once. Four. A box rests on a rough board 10 meters long. When one end of the board is slowly raised to a height of six meters above the other end, the box begins to slide. What's the coefficient of static friction? So for number four, We've got a ramp that looks like this. It's 10 meters long, 6 meters tall. And at this point, it begins to slide, right? So why did I give you all this? Why did I give you the, those two lengths? To find the angle, right? So if you find this angle using inverse sine, you get 37 degrees. I will trust you on that. That seems reasonable. Good? All right. So now let's make our free body diagram. Here's my box on the ramp. So let's think about the forces that are acting on it. Molly, am I going too quick? You get up there? Yeah, no, yeah. OK. So, shh. so we're going to have a parallel component, FG parallel. So that's going to be MG times the sine of our 37 degrees. We're going to have a perpendicular component which is mg times the cosine of theta. We're going to have a normal force, which is also mg cosine theta. And this is just enough force to get it moving, which means up here my force of friction is, well, uh, give me a name for it. S max, right? Because what ha what's happening here is we've got just enough force here to overcome the max, right? OK? And that force of static friction max should be, did it give us the coefficient of friction? What are we trying to do here? Oh, we're trying to find the coefficient of friction. So that's the coefficient of static friction times our normal force. That's a theta. So is everybody good up to there? Any problems? All right, so if it's on the verge of sliding, then what that means is my mg cosine theta has, oops, sorry, mg sine theta. Here, let me do this. I'll write it out this way. It's got to be true that our parallel component is equal to our max, right? So mg cosine theta equals mu. I did it again. I keep writing cosine, and I mean sine. Darn it. Right? Yeah. FT parallel is mg sine theta. And that's got to equal mu times mg cosine theta. Guys in back, please. Polly, you good up to there? Mm -hmm. All right, so let's see. The mg's cancel, right? So to solve for our mu, I'm going to divide both sines by cosine theta. I'm going to get mu s equals sine theta over cosine theta. Oh, what's sine over cosine, you guys? Tangent. Tangent theta. That happens a lot from this point forward in this class. So watch out for that little substitution. You 
good, Molly? Yep. Thanks. Is everybody good? Yes. Um, so since he gave us like six and ten, I just knew that it was a, uh, a three, four, five triangle, and six, eight, ten. Oh, great! Right on. And then just plug in, like, Super oh, duper. That's badass. I wish I had thought of that. That's really cool. Cool. All right. Um, everybody good? Yeah, because then you know that your your sine of theta is what three fifths. Yeah. And your cosine of theta is four fifths. Yeah. Very cool. It just, it just says three fifths, like the four is equal to uh, the coefficient. Yeah, I, I got gotcha. you. That's cool. All right, Molly, you good? Yes. Is everybody good? All right. Oh, wait, I have a question. Yeah. If you were able to just sort of look at it and figure out how it's going to show. On an AP test, you got to show work. I also think that this would be either a really, really hard multiple choice question or a really, really easy FRQ. Oh, okay. You know what I mean? So this is sort of like right on the cusp between those two things. All right, everybody good? All right. Can I jump up ahead to number eight then? All right, so number eight. I think a lot of people tried to solve number eight by just using their answer from seven and tweaking. All right. So in number seven, what we did was we figured out the minimum force that you could exert parallel to the plane to prevent the box from sliding down the ramp. Okay. In eight, it asked for the minimum force that can be applied parallel to the horizontal to prevent the box from sliding down the ramp. All right, we had some problems like this on worksheet, I think it was four or five, and a lot of you discovered, oh, well, you can just divide by the cosine of the angle, okay? But that was true because there was no friction. All right, the fact that there's friction now makes this problem harder, okay? Because the fact that your force is no longer parallel to the ramp is gonna change your normal force, which changes your force of friction, which changes the amount of force you need to prevent it from sliding down the ramp. Follow? So let's go, with that in mind, let's go through number eight. So here we go. A five kilogram box is on an incline that makes an angle of 30 degrees. Five kilograms, 30 degrees. Um, the question wants to know what's the minimum force that can be applied parallel to the horizontal to prevent it from sliding down the ramp. All right, so let's, let's make a crappy free body diagram with not components, but actual forces. So let's see. Gravity is going to pull down, right? Friction is going to try to prevent it from sliding down the ramp. Good. There's the stupid force of you. And normal force. Good? Yep. Now, where is my coordinate system? Well, my coordinate system is going to be, can you guys see the yellow? No, still? We'll go, oh no. There we go. So parallel axis, perpendicular axis. Good? All right, so which two forces am I worried about? Which two forces don't lie along my coordinate system? FG and FU, right? FU. Okay, so we got to fix that, right? So here we go. Let's make ourselves a new drawing. So, so let's see. Um, my force of gravity is going to have two components. There's the parallel component, which is mg sine theta, right? And there's a perpendicular component, mg cosine theta. Everybody follow? Yeah. 
All right, now, the force of u has two components. Which way does the parallel component point? Up the ramp or down the ramp? Up the ramp, right? Because you're pushing sort of up-ish, right? OK? So there's going to be an FU parallel to the ramp. I know. How did I know I was pushing to the right? We're trying to prevent the box from sliding down the ramp. The problem implies that friction alone won't do that. So to help, you're going to have to push in a direction that's sort of up the hill. Would it make sense to push left? Would that do anything to prevent it from going down the ramp? I didn't get the implication. Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, the question says, if the coefficient of static friction is blah, 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 uh, find the minimum force that can be applied to hold the box at rest. So it's saying, I mean, maybe the answer is zero. Maybe you don't have to apply any force. Right? But if you do have to apply a force, it's going to have to be to the right. Make sense? Everybody good? Yes. OK. So our FU parallel is sort of up the hill, right? Point for me. On my drawing, which, will my, which way will my FU perpendicular be? Into the ramp, right? Does that make some sense, you guys, that if, if the ramp is sloped this way and I push horizontally, aren't I pushing into the ramp? OK, so that's what this FU perpendicular represents. Follow? Questions? All right, so let's talk a little bit about some trigonometry here for a minute. Here's my right angle. What's this angle here? 30 degrees, the same as theta, right? Which means that my parallel side is going to use which trig function? Is my drawing too cluttered? Do I need to embiggen it and make a fresh drawing? Seven. The bottom thing is your for FU. Yep. All right. And in terms of opposite adjacent hypotenuse, which one is that? Hypotenuse, right? Good? Yeah. All right, so to find the parallel side, that's going to be cosine, right? Yep. So this is Fu times the cosine of whatever our theta is. And this one ends up being Fu times the sine of whatever theta is. Good? All right. And then I'm missing one other force. What force am I missing? Oh, no, I'm missing two other forces. Normal force. Let's see. So my normal force is going to point this way. How big should it be? Big enough to cancel the two perpendicular bits, right? Because the box is neither going to move up off of the ramp or down into the ramp. So this is... Fg perpendicular plus Fu perpendicular, which is Mg cos, oh duck, cosine theta. Um, plus Fu sine theta, right? Oh yeah. Like the, the, the ghost of Frazier? Maybe it's a false every time it's a reward. Oh, could be. <laughs> All right. Thank you, you for said, wait. <laughs> <laughs> All right, is everybody following? All right, so let me pause for a minute as you guys kind of catch your breath, because there's a bleep ton of letters on the, on the board, right? There's an F ton, force ton of, uh, of letters on the board. So, I really think that learning how to go through this process with all of these letters will make these problems easier in the long run. Okay? All right, so is my drawing done? Uh, no. Well, What's the one other force I haven't put in yet? Force of friction. Force of static friction, right? So you just keep drawing lines. Ah! Frazier, stop it. 
All right, so how much static friction do I have available? Well, I'm trying to find the minimum force that I need. So as a result, I'm going to use my maximum force of static friction, right? Yes. Good? All right. And because I'm kind of out of room here on my drawing, I'm going to go over here and figure out what that is. So that is my coefficient of static friction times my normal force, which is that big frickin' mess up there. I know it is annoying. Plus Fu sine theta. <laughs> All right, are we good? Is that because you're pushing it from an angle? Yeah. So the reason this one is a drag is because your force uh, is, uh, no, we didn't even, there isn't even drag force here, so you're not allowed to make that joke. You, if, if this had been a drag force problem, then you could have laughed. But you can't laugh. When are you allowed to, when are you allowed to laugh at drag force jokes? All right, I'm sorry. Uh, Sarah? Uh, could you finish this problem? Oh, yeah, I was going to. I was totally going to. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Is. <laughs> All right. Are we good? Okay. So, what are we trying to find here? How much you need. How much force you need. So, we're trying to find Fu. Okay. So, in order to prevent the motion. So, we need our net force to be zero, right? Yes. Okay. So, let me buy myself a little bit of room here on the board. All right, Sarah, just out of curiosity, was that a, this is a genuine question, was that a please shut up and solve it, or was that a no, I'm worried you're going to stop now? Yeah, I thought you were stopping. Okay, gotcha, okay. All right, because if I do BS too much, you guys should tell me to stop if it bothers you. Okay, um, all right, so here's the deal. Net force equals net force, right? Yes. So we want our net force to be zero. Right? Because we want to just prevent the motion. And our net force is equal to Fg parallel plus Fu parallel plus Ffs max. Net force equals net force. Oh, you just switched the sign. Follow? So now let's plug in our numbers. Let's see, our Fg parallel is mg sine theta. At this point, we got to, somebody, Margaret, just said something about signs. We got to pick a direction for signs. So do you want to make down the hill negative? Yeah. Negative, right? Plus Fu parallel is just Fu times the cosine of theta. Plus FFS max is this mess over here in green. Mu S times mg cosine theta plus fu sine theta. Would you really explain why it's sine theta? Uh, because over there on the Oh, no, it's just, okay, we're good. Right there. Right you there. sure? All right. How are we doing, you guys? Aren't you glad you signed up for this? All right, now let me briefly say, I don't think there would ever be a problem this long on the test, on the AP test. And I think that going through this process, like somebody said, can't we have the problems on the homework harder than the test? Yep. Here it is, OK? If you guys can do this, you're going to kill the test. How about not? Adam and then Zach and then Sarah. That's fine. So you just set, you set the FG parallel equal to the others? Yeah. That's great. Yeah, that's the same thing. Zach and then Sarah. So is force of me like not allowed? You, no, instead of force of you? <coughs> yes. Oh, you I, I got you. Uh, right. Well, <laughs> I, 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 I was trying to make a consenting joke here, but uh, <laughs> we got it. Um, Gotcha. So when you say the first two forces, this line, this line, or the t one, two, or three? This and this? Gotcha. Okay. So I unfortunately I've shrunk my drawing, but 
If the box moves, the reason the box moves is going to have to do with the components that lie along this parallel plane. Okay. Follow? So these three forces are the three forces that lie along the parallel plane. FG parallel is pulling it down the plane. FFS max and FU parallel are pushing up the ramp. Okay, yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. That's okay. I know it's. Uh, I I get it. This is like this is a lot. This is like math times a billion. All right. Everybody good? Yeah. I don't remember. I'll hang on a minute. I feel like Ken is reasonable. The pig one. I got the right answer, but it took me a lot. Did it? Okay. All right. So are we all good up to here? All right. So now it's basically. I think the only thing we don't know here is the FU, right? So now you just plug in all your numbers and solve for FU. So let's do that real quick. So you're going to get, what was the mass? Five. So you get negative 5 times 9.8 times the sine of 30 plus FU times the cosine of 30 plus the coefficient of friction was 0.5 times 5 times 9.8 times the cosine of 30 plus Fu times the sine of 30, and solve that big fat mess. Three. Oh, sorry. I cool. All right. Sarah, is it bad if I stop there? Oh, yeah. Okay. You want, I guess? No, I was kidding. Okay. Everybody good from there? Yeah. Okay. That's crazy. Is the answer on my sheet right? Yeah. Yes? Okay. Cool. I thought so, but I just wanted to make sure. All right. So what was that? Sorry? I don't have my sheet over. 2.94, I think it turns out to. Or 2.96? 2.96. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Questions? Is it yes. All right. All right, number 10. What? It's a little bit off. Oh. All right, here we go. 4.7, number 10. So this one is really kind of a combination of kinematics and friction stuff. Um, so let's see. A slide-loving pig slides down a certain 35-degree inclined slide in twice the time it would take him to slide down a frictionless one. So here's our slide with friction. Here's our slide with no friction. Do no. All right? So the problem is telling us that both of these slides are at the same angle, despite my terrible drawing. If this one takes a time of t to go down, then this one takes a time of 2t to go down. Cool? All right. So why does that help me? Um, so w why would it take longer to go down the frictionless slide? Oh, I'm sorry, I, I have it written right, I said it wrong. Why would it take longer to go down the slide with friction? Sorry. Because friction is going to slow you down, resulting in a smaller acceleration. Oh, so let's see what we can figure out about, this, about the acceleration here. All right? Now, um, it tells us that the, the slides are the same, so I think we can fairly safely assume that we've got the same displacement for both of them. Good. I think we can fairly safely assume that the pig is starting at rest at the top of the slide, despite the fact that he loves slides. He does not get a running start. And we need to figure out something about acceleration. I should have used the t squared because vi is zero. So I feel like this equation might do us some good. Right? So remember, this is one of those no numbers and solve it. So our question is, how does the fact that it took him longer to go down this slide affect the acceleration? So what I want to do is I'm going to pick an equation that has acceleration and time in it. And then all of the other variables are things that don't change. And that, this accomplishes that, right? Both pigs have the same displacement. 
They both have the same initial velocity. The only thing changing is the acceleration and the time. Good? Furthermore, because my VI is zero, I don't even need to worry about this, do I? No. Okay, so my displacements are equal for both pigs. So over here, my displacement is one half times the acceleration with no friction times t squared. And over here, it's one half the acceleration with friction times 2t squared. Follow? Yep. So the question is, how do the two accelerations compare? So yeah, I think that no friction gives you four times the acceleration. Yep. Does that make sense or no? I got that in Shracker, but I did it in a, 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 a used Another to kinematics equations. All right. Are we good, Sebo? You said hold on. You good? Um, so here, look. The one-halves cancel out, right? Okay, so just the t-squareds cancel out. So now I've got 2 squared times AF, so 4 times the acceleration with friction equals the acceleration with no friction. Okay. So that feels like a useful thing to me. Is everybody good up to that? Any problems? All right. Now, let's take a look at the slide with no friction for a minute. What are we doing on time? Okay, so let's take a look at the no friction slide. No friction. Let's make our free body diagram. Burp, burp, burp. We're going to have an FG perpendicular, which is just MG cosine theta. We're going to have a normal force, which is also MG cosine theta. And we're going to have an FG parallel, which is MG sine theta. Let me pause there for a minute. I just did a whole bunch of fairly high-level physics without any justification. Are we cool with how I got all that garbage? What do you got? So, like, I feel like I could definitely think it out and, like, find the cosines. But, like, if, when, when you're talking about the cosines, like, the cosines are the same thing. Like, the cosines No. You do it by drawing out the vector triangles. But then you put your not triangles, so how do you know? Look, I just, look, because I, I, I remembered them. Like, it, it's the same, it's the same, it's, so every time you do force of gravity, yes, you can remember that, that the one going parallel to the ramp is sine, and the one doing perpendicular is cosine. That always works for gravity. Okay, but if it's not gravity, then you should draw the triangle out like I did uh, here with this blue one. Yeah. Okay. So then, if the ramp is pointing in the opposite direction, then wait, okay, no. Whether the ramp goes this way or this way doesn't matter. The one that's parallel will always be sine, and the one that's perpendicular will always be cosine. Okay. Is that what you're asking? Mm -hmm. All right. Is everybody good? All right. So... All right, so what am I going to use all this garbage to find out? Let's see. Uh, what's our acceleration going to be here, you guys? Uh, you, forget about all this. Just here. What's our acceleration going to be? M-A times equals net force. Net force equals net force. So M-A equals... Mg sine theta, right? Follow? Yep. This is all acceleration with no friction, right? My m's cancel. So my acceleration with no friction is just uh, g times the sine of 35 degrees. So whatever that turns out to. And you know that the ratio between them is force. Good. So now I can find 
the acceleration with friction by dividing by 4, right? Does that make sense, you guys, or no? Uh, we're, so, okay, so Carla just asked, why do I need acceleration? So what is, does anybody know what this is? 9.8 times sine of 35? What do you got? 5.62. Good? Yep. All right, so. All right, so now what we want to do is let's look at with friction. So with friction, the question wants to know what's the coefficient of friction on that ramp, right? Isn't that what it's asking? Yes. So let's think about what forces there are. Well, you're going to have your parallel component again. So F, the parallel component for gravity always uses sine, so mg sine theta. There's a perpendicular component, which is mg cosine theta. There's a normal force, which is mg cosine theta. And there's, what's the last force now, you guys? Force of friction, right? And our force of friction is, I'm going to write it in a different color just so it stands out. It's the coefficient of kinetic friction times this normal force. Good? All right, so your question, Carla, was why do we need the acceleration? Well, our variable that we're looking for is this coefficient of friction, right? Okay, and remember, at the heart of all of these problems, almost without exception, is this stupid net force equals net force thing. Good? On this side, I've got the sum of my forces. So it's going to be... Uh, which way do we want to make positive? Down. Down is positive, okay. So mg sine theta from parallel minus mu k times mg cosine theta. So the problem is the variable is this. So the only way that I can solve this is if I only have one variable. Follow? So what goes on the other side of the equation? MA, right? Mass times the acceleration with friction. So I've got to find that acceleration with friction in order to solve this. Otherwise, I have two unknowns. Does that make sense? Everybody good? So what's my acceleration with friction? Oh, well, that's just one-fourth of the acceleration with no friction, right? So a quarter of 5.62 is... Uh, what uh, 1.425? Is that right? 1.405. Oh, all right. Um, all right. So before I do anything, first of all, the masses cancel out, and then solve it. So you get 1.405 equals 9.8 times the sine of 35. Minus mu k times 9.8 times the cosine of 35. And solve for your mu. Whoa. All right. So I know that was kind of, there was a lot there. But here's, if you only got one thing out of today. Every single problem I solved, solved, I approached the same way. I made a free body diagram where all of my forces pointed along my coordinate axis system, which for all these inclined plane ones is parallel and perpendicular, right? And then I set up a net force equals net force equation. Every problem I did today, that's how I did it. Follow? So that's your wheelhouse for these force problems. Net force equals net force. Make sure all your forces lie along your coordinates. Good? All right. So um, tomorrow, I was going to just make a Q&A day. If I do that, do you guys have enough questions, or do you want a couple yes. more practice problems? Not more practice problems. So I'll tell you what. So 
the last sheet of the review you can get on my website. So let me show you where it is real quick. I'm sorry it didn't get printed up. I'm not sure what happened. So, you know, as always, go to Hacker Stuff. Go to AP Physics Worksheets and stuff. Go to Unit 4, Newton's First Two Laws. That's what we're doing right now. Go to Unit 4 Worksheets. And I believe that the... Oops. So you won't have an edit view, but you'll at least be able to view it. And I think the last page before the answers has, yeah, three more problems. Okay. Which I had meant to give you. So if you want to do those, that's cool. The answers are on the next page. All right, so tomorrow is your time. Come in, ask questions. I'm happy to do more drag force problems if you want. Whatever you need. To me, it seems like you're doing very well considering you didn't do honors last year. I don't mean it. I don't mean that it's not good. I know that. It's just part Oh, <laughs> <laughs>